Hey everyone, Joe Menza here, and I'm just chilling in my uh, living room. I've got uh, my thumb box from Gorilla uh, going here, and I've got my iPad next to me, and we're doing one called Geistrin Stream. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Uh, this was a picture that was submitted by uh, someone in our Ron Ranson group. So basically, I thought I'd do a little 8 by 10 and uh, have a little fun with my uh, my gorilla thumb box. Um, basically, what I'm doing here is I'm just taking a small goat hair brush and I'm just wetting down the entire paper. And so we're going to do this little river stream. You can see off to the right, but you could also see if you go back to the beginning of the video, I have a, a photo there. Now I've cropped it. Um, I've cropped it in such a way that uh, I, I think the original photo was more like portrait mode. And I just, I'm not a big fan of portrait mode. I like landscape mode. It's kind of like you're turning your phone sideways. I don't know. Um, but anyways, I just clipped this down because it was kind of buckling a little bit. This is Fabriano 8x10, 140 pound. It's 25% cotton. <clears throat> so we're zooming in a little bit here. I'm just adding a little... Uh, a little bit of ultramarine blue. We're going to kind of set the background for this. So a little ultramarine blue. There's not going to be really much sky except for a little light coming through from the back. So we're just kind of doing these vertical strokes. And now I'm introducing a little bit of yellow ochre. You can use yellow ochre, raw sienna, what, whatever you will. If it gets a little green, it's fine. Um, so we're just going to kind of follow this vertical stroke up and down going stronger and stronger as we layer. Now I want to keep a little bit of light toward the center coming through as you can see on the original photo. Um, you can see where there's a little light coming through. And someone had asked me, uh, you know, I do a lot of paintings from my imagination, so someone had asked me and said, uh, you know, if you do something from a photo, share it with us. So that's why I've kind of got this setup going and I've got the picture off to the side. So you can have an idea of what it is that I'm, I'm going for here. So again, I'm kind of layering this one out. And you're going to see I kind of build this one up a little bit. Um, it's a cautious way to approach a photograph, uh, photograph for a painting without doing any drawing or getting into details um, you just kind of layer it and build it up so that you have sort of a dimensional look to it now as far as cutting things out um, I'm not really uh, eliminating much from this although I did crop the original photo um, there's a little more to the bottom uh, where the water almost looks a little brown um, but there's really, I mean, the, the picture itself is pretty simple, so I'm not, uh, not really move, removing too much, but I'm also not going to paint every single detail. So, really, I'm just going to get the gist of it. And again, here we're using the yellows and blues on my palette. Um, we're fine if they ultimately go a little bit to the green side. But I definitely want to keep this area toward the center open where we have our stream. And we'll work on that as, as the picture goes on. Um, but ultimately, I'm just kind of shaping this out using lighter uh, amounts of paint here. Usually, if I'm painting from my imagination, I'll load up the brush and I'll go in a little heavier with paint. But in this case, because I am going from a photo, I'm going to build this up a uh, little bit by little bit and then once we get close we'll probably you know go a little bit bolder with the colors so i'm still using a goat hair based brush i don't really know what this one is or how i had picked it up but i trimmed it so it would have a flat edge on it you can still use your small hake brush if you like your small ron ranson brush or if you're using the goat hair from uh, Frank Clark. He's got the baby goat hair. You can use that too. So basically I'm just kind of laying out what I see and I'm going with the brighter colors first. I've got some yellow going in. Um, I don't want to go dark too quick. Um, I want to keep the scene you know somewhat light. 
I have a tendency to kind of get things a little too dark on the dark side, and this is sort of a daytime scene, so I want to keep that uh, as if we were there. We want to keep that same feeling, same feeling of the day, almost as if you were plain air painting. So we've got a little bit of some tree foliage started, and I'm also keeping with my tissue here, I'm trying to keep the shape of this little river going so I don't uh, follow that up too much. And so it doesn't get dry, I just gave it a quick light spray with my spray gun. So now I'm just coming in and I'm just, I've, I've added some burnt umber and I'm just putting in some tree trunks. I want to do this lightly so that they diffuse a bit. I want to start giving this some depth. And again, these are, these are lighter here, you can also use a rigger brush and you can sort of just do an up down uh, pattern to simulate the the trees the distant trees so you definitely want some depth to look like you're going down river here and even still right now it doesn't look like a whole lot but right now i'm just kind of shaping out the shape of the shape of the river shape of the creek the geistrin stream and i guess this is a this is a stream in the netherlands looks like a nice uh, nice place to to be enjoyable place And so again, I'm just laying out the shape of the stream. In the meantime, the background's kind of diffusing a little bit before we put in some heavier tree trunks. So here we go with the number three rigger brush. Burnt umber paints gray. The more closer you want the trees to look, the darker you can go with it. My background is still wet, so hopefully we still continue to get some diffusion. But just simply vertical strokes up and down to create the illusion of a lot of trees. I'm going to be careful not to overdo it. Um, you know, before you know it, you'll have an entire solid background. And I want to keep, again, that sort of center area open so I can have a little bit of light coming in to the stream. And now I'm just building up a little bit. Just a little bit in the water here. I, I, I like to skip around a little bit as things are drying. Um, I don't want to have to use the hair dryer if I don't want to get too uh, spoiled by the hair dryer. I mean, if I happen to be out uh, on plain air, you know, we have to rely on, on drying things naturally. So one of the ways I've kind of gotten around with the hair dryer deal is uh, kind of jumping around the paper letting things dry a little bit and then coming back to other areas and if I really want it to dry I can always stop the camera and just sit back a little bit and uh, have some coffee or whatnot and of course if you want to reopen it re-wet it you can hit it with the spray bottle So I'm just taking this uh, tissue so I can keep open anything that's running down into the uh, stream there. I want to keep that open. So I'm taking advantage of this brush here. The it's very This one's very similar to that baby goat hair brush. I'm just dipping the tips of the bristles into some 
leafy colors. Payne's gray, yellow, whatever yellow you use. It could be lemon yellow um, and ultramarine blue. So sort of the mid-tone colors. I just want to start kind of putting in these leaves and getting a feel for our wooded scene here. Anchoring the trees a little bit to the ground um, with the same colors. You would think as an 8x10, this video would be a lot shorter. But uh, again, going from a photo, a lot of times what happens is if you keep looking at the photo is uh, you're trying to duplicate something or trying to capture something. So you don't paint it as loosely as you would if something you memorized or looked at the photo and then put it to the side. So if you're plain air painting, you're probably going to spend at least a half hour, regardless of whatever one that you, you know, um, any size from really maybe 11 by 15 and down. So again, with the same perspective here, we're going to do the leafy colors here and you'll see in that middle section there's there's some light coming through we purposely kept that open um, one thing i did forget to do is i didn't make any branches for some of these trees so i'm gonna have to do that now it should have kind of been done prior to the leaf addition but it's not gonna hurt anything So now as I add these darker tree trunks, you can see it now it starts to push everything back. And we're definitely starting to get a woodland type feel. So that's why I'm going in, I'm putting in these darker ones now. And then I'll come back to the leafy colors. Some quick flicks of the brush create some branches. Isn't that something how you just do a few little branches? You have one branch that's sort of in the light and immediately you, your mind registers what that what that is. It's an amazing uh, it's an amazing thing. So now I'm going to take a little bit of the cad yellow or cad yellow hue um, and I'm going to start putting that on top on this side here so I can go back to like the brighter colors again. And by the way, if you use like the student grade colors and you buy like a tube of cad yellow, um, it's just very, very bright, the, the artist grade. Although I do believe cad has some toxicities to it. Um, but it is very, very bright. I have not tried any of the CAD substitutes. But uh, the artist grade, if you really want it bright, the artist grade is really intense. And you'll see here, I believe I have a little bit of that I'm going to be using. 
So this is one of those moments where I'm just kind of letting things dry a little bit. And a uh, little, little so far, a little break in the action. I could, I suppose, edit out some of these, but it uh, gives me a chance to give some thoughts in between. You would think with doing a small size painting like this, you know, it's doesn't lend itself to brushes that are of the loose uh, variety, but it, it still does. It just, you have to kind of scale down and, and not have, still not have the details. I don't think you can get a whole lot smaller than this without doing so. So continuing on to add the foliage, we've got uh, our yellows, our blues, and I've kind of got a branch coming off each side here um, just to create a little bit of an arch going down, give you something to kind of look down that way. Uh, it kind of look like you're trying to look underneath the branches. So here and again, I'm utilizing the bristles of this brush and I'm creating foliage and grass. It's interesting how you can use one brush so effectively on so many different shapes, depending on the shape of the brush itself. And that's what makes this brush so appealing is you don't have to really reach for a stippling brush because you just dry it off and you know, fray out the, the bristles, and now you have a stippling brush. Me, personally, I find mops and flat brushes, neither of them really do the job for an overall landscape. Flat brushes tend to, they just, they don't carry enough water. Um, mops do carry more water, but they have the point, so they're kind of like f putting you into a detailed situation. For me, using like the Hake Hake goat hair brush, it just makes more sense. I know a lot of people look at it and say, well, uh, I don't know, you know, and they're coming from a smaller brush, but in my mind, it always just made sense that that's the brush you'd want to paint with. So one of the things I'd suggest is if you really want to get good with that brush is that that is all you use. When I came into this, um, it was one of the first brushes I used. So using the, the Hake brush was uh, something I started with. If you're coming from a, another kind of a brush, I could see how that could be a little bit of a, uh, an issue jumping over. But my opinion is if you're going to use a particular brush, keep using it over and over and over again until it becomes an extension of your arm. And as you can see, I've spent a lot of time on these leaves and little things of foliage. Um, it's not that I'm really following the picture now at this point. I just want it to look... I just want it to look nice, but I'm also trying to capture... If you notice, there are areas of light on the tips of the foliage going down the river. So I want those to stand out. I'm not necessarily getting the colors exact. There's more yellow in mine, I think. Um, but that's a matter of style. And you're never trying to copy a scene exactly. There should always be an artistic spin put on it because if there wasn't think about it i mean you could just take that photo frame it and hang it on your wall you may as well have a photo so if there's not some artistic license involved uh you'd you'd be better served to just take the photo So again, I'm just, again with the foliage, I'm trying to shape out little areas of light, keeping that interest down the center, following that river down. We'll zoom in a little bit here. You get a better idea. 
I'm going to be really careful now because we don't want to close up that hole. There's nothing wrong with being detail-oriented if you're enjoying yourself and you don't find it to be tedious or fussing. Um, if you're having a good time, as I'm doing here, and you're just enjoying the moment and you're adding some things, then it's not really fussing. I'm going to put in some additional branch work here. Being careful not to close in that light source to the left. Most of what I've done from the beginning, I always kind of stuck around. In the very beginning, I did 9 by 12 paintings. And that served me pretty good because 11 by 14 is pretty big for the starting uh, beginner. You know, there's a lot of elements to bring together in one painting. And if one of it doesn't look right, then the whole painting doesn't look right. You have to know how to make a tree, a sky leaves, a background, rocks, you know, and all of that falls apart on one element. So when I used to practice, I'd be like, okay, I'm just going to take a piece of paper and I'm going to do trees until I feel like I get it because this element here, I could do the whole painting and my sky is terrible. I do the whole painting and my tree is awful. So each thing has to come together in the landscape painting. So now that most of the foliage and everything is done, it's time to bring the focus down into the, into the stream. And this is critical if you're looking for something that you want to, you know, look realistic. You're going for something in the photo. And subtle tints and little colors and little reflections will go a long way so that when you stand back and you look at the picture... Uh, it looks like realistic water. Some people have a probably a tendency to just paint some blue color there and hope for the best. But sometimes a simpler, just slightly tinted water. Um, making sure to have almost no paint in areas where you want some brightness from the stream. Having a little tint, almost a dirty or just slightly bluish effect. And then when the stream curves, it has no paint and it's just stark white. That transition, it has a very good element of realism to it. I'm kind of going out of my way here to make sure that part of this stream is white in color and letting the paper show through. And then we have the tint near the bank so that it looks like the light is coming off of part of the stream. Like I said, it's very easy to just paint like a blue color, uh, you know. And, and most water, when you look at it, isn't even really blue. It's a reflection of whatever it is above it. Either it's the sky or the foliage Usually, water isn't blue. I know in the Midwest where I'm at, water is, if it's blue, somebody made it blue. You like Chicago, and they do the St. Patrick's Day water. <laughs> but uh, very rarely is it blue unless you have a total blue sky above you, and it's reflecting that. So I'm doing the rock in the center. You can see in the picture there's a rock there burned umber Payne's gray a little bit of ultramarine blue and just painting a shape and then taking that card and scraping in like I would any other rock trying to reposition my painting here get it to cooperate I'd say with this one if I had to 
sum it up, I'd say I was being more careful than anything. Not not fussing, but, but being cautious. Being methodical, that's another uh, another good word. When you're really setting your mind to how you want something to turn out, a lot of times you'll you'll fall right into a groove. Now, one of the things I wouldn't mind having here is I could probably use just an ever so slight tint of blue in there just to kind of catch your eye so you don't... The human mind thinks water is blue for whatever reason for the most part. Maybe it's the ocean. I don't know. But uh, sometimes just a little spot of that color will be enough. Sometimes you could do a painting and there's not enough warmth in it and you can put one little area with just a little red. It's just enough to your eye feels like that area is a little bit warmer. Um, so in this case here, we had a little bit of just a tint of blue and then have the couple of trees sort of reflecting down into the water. And that'll give it the element of realism that we're really kind of looking for, that I'm looking for. So rather than go with like a blue blue like ultramarine or something like that, I'll use a little bit of cerulean blue. It almost kind of complements the greenishness in the trees there. So it, it still could be a little reflective of the trees, be a little bit darker. And just enough to just say there's water here. So we're getting there. I hope you guys enjoyed this video so far. Um, just so you know, I'm going to be doing videos on a regular basis on my channel, as I always have. Um, I'm trying to work in some oils and acrylics just to have some fun with that so things don't get too stale. And then, of course, I have uh, Patreon now where I'm going to be doing more detailed paintings, extra paintings there um, for those people who have said, hey, do you have a tip jar or something people have wanted to you know, uh, show a little bit of support, which is great. I appreciate any kind of support you can give um, to buy supplies. Um, there's also, if you're on a desktop or a laptop, there's a little applause button. If you click that, you can, like, give the creator $2. Um, it's a nice little feature, but I wish they put it on... I mean, most people are using devices today, so I'm not sure of the mindset of that. Um, but anyway, you can support, even at the very bare minimum, leave a comment, give me a like, um, thumbs up, whatever, and uh, anything helps gets a little bit more traffic through. Um, as I go along, I'd like this to be more and more what, uh, what I do. As I head into the retirement years, I got a ways to go yet, but who knows, maybe in 10 years I'll be only doing this and teaching people locally, and I think that would be, that would be awesome. I've always had an artistic side in me. Um, it'd be nice to do something you love for a change after 30 years of uh, doing things that you... Not necessarily... I never hated anything I did, but uh, it's nothing I would have done had I had won the lottery. Let's use that as a, as a goal. <laughs> so we're zooming in here now. We're taking a look, and you can see the water. It's still a little drying a little bit. Here's the original on my tablet. Um, but you can see how we've defined that water and we've caught. You can see how that's just coming down a little bit. I'm going to let this dry the rest of the way. And if there's any other little changes, I will share them with you. You can see a little glare there from the... Just taking, just taking a little cloth there. I wanted to open up that little light there. You know, when you get in close, you can see you wipe that, and it wipes away a little bit of the paint. It looks like 
the photo where the light is catching off the top of the water. And just some other little details. But you see in the back, look toward the back. See how there's like white there? And then to the right you have uh, things coming down. It really looks realistic there. It almost looks like the real thing, you know. That's what I was talking about with leaving, some, leaving no paint on an area. And I'm just going to take my card and just kind of create some smaller rocks going back to give it a little feeling of distance. This was after I shut the camera off and I looked at it and I thought, well, I'm going to go back on and we'll show a few more things. So just touching up along the banks. Sometimes you think you're done with the painting. You sit back on your couch, you look at it, you go, oh, I could probably uh, do a couple little 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 things here. Little darker areas, you know, as things dry back on your painting painting looks softer then you can say you know if I really put some darks in here things will really pop and then I can highlight other things that have dried back more than I expected so you can see like this catching the using the cad yellow catch the light coming off the top in the center So that's it. I thank everyone for watching. I hope I see some of you on Patreon. I've got a few already, and I appreciate your support. And let's take a close look at this and in the virtual frame. I don't have a frame that's 8 by 10 So uh, go to the virtual frame and see how she looks. And there you have it in a, in a virtual mat. Thanks again, everyone.